go down. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Been told that before. Hello, everyone. Um, oh, no, press the wrong button. Okay. So, you all know me, Victoria McDonald, Vicky, Quirk and Colour. Um, who am I, or more to the point, who was I? Oh, can I get an all? Oh, yeah. yeah, look at that. <laughs> the Auburn bowl cut. The early years. So I, I grew up in Belfast. I was the eldest of five kids. Uh, Mum was a nurse. Um, eldest of five, like I said. Um, but I had a really, really happy childhood. Parents were very strict, which kind of caused problems later on. But there you go. Um, then when I was 19, I moved to Manchester. I went to uni. I did... I didn't go to uni in Glastonbury, but that kind of like, uh, <laughs> it was a bit of a festival, let's put it that way. Um, and I did art and design, and I went against my family. They were all police, army, scientists, uh, doctors, etc. but I was the black sheep who liked art. <laughs> uh, but I did it anyway, um, but then, my mum and dad were like, when are you going to get a real job? When are you going to start play, stop playing around with this art stuff? And it, it did get into my psyche. So actually, the reason why I joined the police was I was on a bus in Manchester when someone got stabbed. Um, and I was a key witness in that case. And I got to go through the investigation process. And I was like, oh, this is exciting. <laughs> and my mum and dad were horrified. Um, but I decided that that's what I was going to do. And life has a funny way of working out. Uh, then I joined Northumbria Police in Newcastle, the stag and Hindu capital of the UK. <laughs> Very interesting. And then in 2013, I hilariously moved to Sussex, where I was a PC and then became a DC, where I still am at the minute. So why did I decide to go into business? I was 35 in January 2017, and I collapsed at work. I got taken to hospital by ambulance, and I had a burst of ovarian cyst. And nobody from work contacted me until 28 days later. I wanted to be more than just a number. And more than that. Long hours, cancelled rest days, bad supervision. Can I just say, when I got contacted 28 days later asking how I was, it was, and when are you coming back? <laughs> it wasn't about how I was, and that was a massive wake up call. I'd been in the job 10 years by that point, and I'd never had a sick line. So that, that was the start. There's got to be more than this. And around that time, I started thinking back to my time in uni and why did I decide to go into the job? Why didn't I carry on doing what I love doing? And I was craving the creativity, the, the excitement, just making stuff rather than just being a number and ignored. So I retrained as an interior designer online. I did a diploma because I wasn't going to go back to uni and it, it took too long and I was just like, don't have the money either. So I thought, right, I've got my qualification. What do I do now? To get a job in an interior design company, you need a degree, which to me sounds daft because it's a visual process. And if you can present a portfolio, why do you need a degree to say, this is what I can do? So yeah. I met a mutual friend of ours, Matt Colburn, and he said, oh, you, you should talk to Alex. And I got on the quick start day on January 2019. I bought that as a Christmas present to myself. And between buying that ticket and going the quick start date and then signing up in April 2019, I woke up one night at 5 a.m. And I don't know why, and quirk and colour was in my head. And I was like, this is a bit bizarre, but I wrote it down on my phone. 
and I, I put it away. And I found it a couple of days later, and I just went. So we're an interior design company based in Brighton that supports busy professionals in transforming their homes to reflect their personality and increase their happiness and well-being. <laughs> and niching down even further, I'm a massive fan of colour psychology. Not the visuals of colour, but how they make us feel. And that's my in-your-face uh, branding, which was done by the lovely Sapna. Flamingo ofs. Oh, no, sorry. I did the wrong button. So some of my wins. I'm not as far ahead as some of the other people, so this isn't going to be about numbers, etc., etc. But yes. exactly. So I joined in cohort three in 2019. I went live with my business in January 2020. And we all know what happened in March, right? I got my first sale in February 2020 at two and a half grand, which was down to James for helping me along the sales process. And Colin, uh, not Colin, <laughs> Robin, <laughs> who's Colin? Who's Colin? And Robin for pushing me for those prices, which I just didn't feel qualified to ask for, but I got it. For sure. yeah. And then bloody COVID hit. So, um, I had previously made uh, uh, candles as basically one of my crafty type things, um, but I developed a quirk and colour range of candles and I'm working on the homewares and stuff. I got accepted to exhibit at the first Brighton Design Show, which I have to have add a caveat, that didn't actually happen because of COVID, but I got accepted, which I was like, I mean, Brighton, it's like quirk and colour, isn't it? So I was very happy at that. Um, I'm now uh, exhibiting artists on Saatchi Art. Now, if you haven't heard of Saatchi and Saatchi Galleries, they are like the biggest like worldwide platform, and I'm on there. Haven't sold anything yet, yet. Yeah. But that's really important to me because it's going back to like my art, which I took up again in in a big way uh, in January after I suffered a mini stroke and got hospitalised. Um, I'm about to become a, a published artist. Um, I have one of my paintings being published in a book, which should actually be coming out around now, so I'll have to check up on that. Um, I have attracted attention from John Lewis and Dun Elm, which are big, major, high street names. <laughs> With uh, John Lewis, they were really interested in my Christmas candles. However, because I haven't had them safety tested, which costs thousands, we had to let that one go. And Dunelm, that's uh, to do with the upcycled furniture, and that's still ongoing, so fingers crossed. Um, and I have a magazine shoot of my own house in the pipeline. So I've got a few bits to kind of like tidy up, and uh, then they're going to come up. I don't know which publication it's going to be yet, but it's going to be one of the top interiors. So I'm really, really excited about that. So how has my life changed? My mindset. What was I like in... Uh, not good. Yeah, I was not good, right? My relation, uh, my mindset has, is, it, that is the, m the biggest and the best change. And that has affected every part of my life since then. My relationships and friendships, I managed to get the courage to end my seven and a half year relationship because it wasn't serving me, which was, you know, a, a, a very hard thing to do. Um, and friendships as well. Um, toxic people, just get rid of them because that makes room for the people that you need to be in your life. Yeah. I have more confidence in myself. It's given me the courage to make tough decisions in all aspects of my life. I came off antidepressants eight months after joining Shift to Success. <laughs> and I thought I was going to be on them for life. It's given me direction. I now know what I want and I know that I'm going to get it. And it's helped me find my purpose, my why. 
and I'm finally in a good place and looking forward to the future. So I'll rattle through these quickly. My top tips, engage, follow and trust the process. I know you're going to want to skip ahead. Don't. There's a, re there, there, there's a reason why it is designed this way. Don't duck out of the things that push you out of your comfort zone because that is where you are going to grow. That is where you're going to get the confidence. That's where you're going to get the courage. And that's going to take Take care of your mindset. It'll take care of you. Don't stop learning. Read. Listen to Audible. Don't think you know everything. Nobody knows everything. Set yourself specific deadlines and hold yourself accountable. Day, date, time. I will have done this. And if you get it early, brilliant, treat yourself. Reasons and excuses are two different things. Regularly view and review your vision board. The vision board that we all created at the start, that, that'll change. That'll change as people might come and go, update it and use it to push yourself forwards. Celebrate all your wins. It doesn't matter if it's a teeny tiny thing. Celebrate them all. Shout out to the group. We'll all be there to celebrate with you. Reach out to the community. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Someone else might be sitting there thinking, I need to ask this question, but I don't want to. Just get rid of that. Just, just ask. And listen to the mentors, because they know their stuff. Don't take shortcuts. Don't try and jump ahead. Don't think, oh, there's this get rich quick scheme, Adam, uh, that, uh, <laughs> that I can do to get this. Um, and enjoy the journey because the journey is what will make you get into your final destination. So thank you.